Bernie and AOC say that climate change is an existential threat, but do voters care as much as they do? We are back with Antoine and Henry to take on these topics and more. Um, so <laughs> we've fired up today. Yeah, I like it. Um, so, you know, we we're just talking about AOC a minute ago, and I always say I think it's incredible how she basically, as a fresh member of Congress, before she was even sworn in, mm -hmm. put the Green New Deal on the map, made it a subject of national conversation. It is now an integral part of what uh, the Democratic contenders are running on. And she and Bernie Sanders took it a step forward and have um, introduced a resolution to declare climate change an existential threat. And Antoine, I want to start with you on this. I always love to get your South Carolina perspective. Like, is this is climate change something that is regularly coming up on the trail? Is this, in fact, central to how voters are making their decision out there in the Democratic primary? Well, I'll say different strokes for different folks. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, climate change, as we know, is a major issue, not just in this in our party, but in this country. And regardless of whether the Trump administration wants to ignore it or not, it is real, and we've seen that firsthand. I think that where it falls on the priority chart is a different question. Uh, when I talk to voters across this country, particularly in South Carolina, where voters of color, um, particularly African American voters, are plentiful, uh, and we'll decide who our nominee will be. What, what percent of the primary election? Sixty percent African American, fifty-five percent women. That is very, in nobody South cannot wow. forget very, that. Yeah. Very reflective yeah. of what will happen right. post South Carolina, and I believe South Carolina will decide who our nominee. But I might be biased. Um, <laughs> but what I will tell you is that people are worried about the things that make them go to bed at night, worrying, and the things that make them get up in the morning because they haven't solved the problems the night before. Mm -hmm. And for some, climate change does fall on that because it impacts people's quality of life. I think the thing for candidates who make who make this the top priority for them is they have to frame it where everyday people can make it relatable to how it impacts right. them yeah. today, not yeah. tomorrow. I yeah. think that's always yeah. right, which that's is if you're going to talk right. about it, you should say, look, your energy bills are going up because you know, right. temperatures are right, or whatever. You your have to personalize it. flooding. Right. It's things like that. <laughs> I, 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 in, in South yeah. Carolina, look, we've had the thousand-year flood. Uh -huh. We've had uh, major storm after storm. Right. If you look at what happens downtown Charleston every time it flooding. rains, um, we know like firsthand um, what climate change has done and will continue to do in this country. So I think it is definitely is an issue in South Carolina. That's a good huh. point. But Henry, we don't really see Joe Biden or some or some of these other candidates talking about climate change in this way. And I think really this is going to be the fundamental divide in the Democratic Party for 2020, which hmm. is, is it existential? Because existential Weird. means what what thing? That means we have to declare war on it. Yeah. That it is a, like a Green New Deal level, 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 level yeah. event, yeah. whereas Joe Biden is like, this can be mitigated or middle middle road type policy. Well, you know, I some yeah. closer to Biden on that issue when right. it comes to the rest of the far left Democrats who mm -hmm. are spewing this Green New disaster. <laughs> um, and it's gonna, it's, it truly is, it truly is a disaster. I love, when I when I was on Capitol Hill asking Democrats yeah. about the Green New Deal when it was first introduced, Democrats were just scattering around dodging the question. Yeah, they don't know what's in it. It was a disaster. Know, no yeah, one knows what's in it, but yeah. you know, it's, suddenly it's some genius it's idea signaling. to Democrats. It's signaling. Wait, wait, wait. What, what do you think? Let, let me add yeah. a different different lens of clarity yeah. to this. What I think Biden has been clear about is that, yes, climate change is the issue, but there's a way to do it without having to do it to the extreme of either side. And right. I think that's what he's trying to say. When he said middle ground, I mean, let's take some parts, let's declare that climate change is an issue, which mm -hmm. Republicans will not do, but let's figure out some things we can do in the short term and work towards long term the, goals. The, let's not the just do all problem, the things. The problem yeah. is, and you know, let's put the electoral politics aside because I think you bring up some good points on the realities. The problem is there is no middle ground on the science. And the science says Nobody disagrees that, that there is a massive change, uh, that a World War II mo style mobilization well, is uh, in fact is what's it, required yeah, I don't know about that, to keep us from getting to that two, three degrees is Celsius it 10 increase, years? Is that it is 12? disastrous. As a, as a center left Democrat, you will not d get disagreement from me that it is a major issue and we should pull the climate change alarm. But I think what most people are saying is, what can we do that's measurable in the short term mm -hmm. to and then work towards some long-term solutions? Yeah. I think that's what, and I think that's why you've probably seen the approach from some to not take a vote on the bill in the Congress. Well, and here's yeah. the other thing um, that I think has been smart uh, politically on the Green New Deal is that it puts the economic transition for people whose lives would be negatively affected by moving towards these new policies. It puts that front and center. Smart. So no more like, sorry, West yeah. Virginia, you're just yeah. screwed. Too bad. Why don't you move out of the state? It's no, we're going to pay attention. We're going to make sure that you and your family are going to be okay 
as we're making this but, transition. But, but I don't want us to press the ignore button on what the Obama administration done as it relates to climate change. They made some very, I think, progressive and bold mm -hmm. um, positions yeah. on this issue, only to have the Trump administration roll back the clock on some of these things. Well, and we've learned, though, well, we a lot more since too. the Obama yeah. years, too, about how um, much of an existential threat. It really I, is. I, I disagree with this language. I mean, I 19, do, I 1987, not, I, I, IPCC I was saying the same thing in 1987 that was saying We're today. still, we're still but, around. Were you here in yeah. D.C. on Monday when there was a literal monsoon flooding Pennsylvania? Weather is not climate. Weather is not climate. Sure. True. actually, yes. When we're having weather events all the time, it is climate. I may have my Democratic earplugs on, so I just want to be clear. Are you saying that climate change is not an issue? No, I'm saying weather is not climate. Do I believe climate, climate change? Is, do I believe climate, climate change, change has an impact yes. on the weather? Do I believe climate change is real? Yes. Climate do I change believe has it an is an existential threat to the United States in the next 10 years or 12 years as AOC wants no. to believe? No. no. I this do not isn't believe that. something you believe yeah. or disbelieve. It's science. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> finances. Um, the AP Sciences. did <laughs> AP did a poll um, on financial security that I thought was very interesting. So. Majority say that their financial situation right now is pretty good, generally good, 67%. Meanwhile, nearly four in 10 Americans lack confidence that they could pay an emergency expense of just $1,000, and only two in 10 are very confident they will have enough savings for retirement. And Henry, to me, this is the story of America, right? This is the story of, okay, yeah, unemployment is low, no. right? things, the stock market is doing well, all those things. And meanwhile, you have so many people nervous and with anxiety about their future and their security and whether they could handle a basic economic emergency of the type that everyone is going to face at some point. Yeah, no, it's really it's really sad. I mean, we got to yeah. think of you, the number was 67% of the, the economy is doing very well. These people are very comfortable where they are. 67%. The majority of these people are fine. The other the other percentage is a disaster, and we got to figure out what's going to happen with them with these student student debts and all these loans yeah. and all this stuff that's making the country what no, and it, which which is which is driving these people. They have no savings. They have no they have no financial backing of any sort. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be some sort of uh, some sort of legislation put forward to fix that. Um, and Democrats, and I think, best attack against this whenever the Trump administration talks about how good the economy is is it's good for some. But structurally, it is revealed that since 2008, there are just so many people that never That's recovered. what Trump ran and, on. And I, and I think a Trump lot of people message. don't understand so, so, that. So, so a couple of things. Yeah. We cannot forget the what Barack Obama inherited and what mm -hmm. he had to do to pull this country up. Uh, up and out. Uh, sure. Number two, Donald Trump has benefited from a Barack Obama economy. While the Republicans want to do victory laps and toe touches about this economy, make no mistake, it's booming for some, but it's humming for others. And that 40% is just a tip of the iceberg. You have people in this country. Forget about trying to make ends meet. They're putting two ends together, hoping they meet every single day. You have people working three or four jobs and consider themselves still working poor. Absolutely. And so when Republicans yeah. think that they're going to run into this argument that the economy is doing well and this the economy is stupid and that's going to pull them across the finish line, well, the economy I, is doing I, well. I beg to differ. It's doing well for some. And, and these, this tax scam that passed uh, several months ago Great that, Republic, all time. that Republicans thought that was going to uplift the middle class, we know that is the, bigger bunch, the biggest bunch of meatloaf ever. My biggest beef with the way they talk about this is they is that Trump won by speaking to these people. That's right. By speaking to the that's foreign. Right. But he hadn't fixed that their problems as he promised. And he should focus. He should focus more. No, yeah, that's what. That, that's, that's the. Yeah. That's the yeah. problem. He, and that was his base. That you is, can hit that the top. Is his base, you can but, hit the top. And exactly. Talk points, and, and, but you need to talk more about this. Exactly, and that is exactly, what I. Would and I would argue exactly, the second most exactly. important issue. And they fluctuate mm -hmm. depending on the poll. Is healthcare. Yes. And while these people who are doing well uh, economic wise, mm -hmm. one misstep with with their health, and they are yeah, doomed. Done. Yep. I agree Slowed with you. And so car, that's why the Republicans will have a math family. problem, uh, in t as they did in 2018. We'll have the same well, math well, problem. Well, I, I, I see a recession back to Congress. So. I do yeah. want to say I I don't. This is not a Democrat or Republican problem. This is a 30 years, 40 years without working people getting a raise. It's Absolutely. been a bipartisan consensus of, you know, free trade, open markets, all of that, which to your point, problem. Antoine, has benefited very much a small portion of the population, but most Americans have not seen that.
growth. And, and that's that's not didn't start under Trump, and, but and it's Crystal, continued. Make under no Trump. mistake, Democrats have demonstrated that they are more pro working class people than the other side. I would argue that till I go to well, my I don't, I don't know about. I would argue that until we I don't go have to my time for this debate. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue that until I go to my grave. Gentlemen, there's Antoine science to prove that. Yeah. Round three. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Coming up, a tribute to former presidential candidate who really shook things up. A federal appeals court rules President Trump cannot block people on Twitter. We're going to tell you about that and what it might mean for AOC. All of that when Rising continues.